you feel when you actually felt, you know, that you had a chance? Well, when we took the lead, I was frightened because Liverpool are, are very, very dangerous once they go behind. Uh, and they, they really played some stunning football against us when, when we went in front. Um, and consequently, they went in front against us. Um, but when you, you've got to get in front against Liverpool, mm. and hopefully you can hang on in there. Their manager, Steve Coppola, I mean, he's had FA Cup final experience, an old pal of yours at Man United. Yeah. How important is he, do you think, in that dressing room right now? Well, I think he's very important, Steve. He's obviously been there before, Bob, and he's got to relax the players as much as he possibly can. Yeah. Um, but he's got an unenviable task. Mm. They are facing Liverpool, and it's going to be a very hard afternoon for them. Um, I, I honestly feel the hardest part for Palace is when the game becomes a football game. Uh, the enthusiasm and, and the game will, will carry along at 100 mile an hour for perhaps the, the whole of the first half and perhaps 10 or 15 minutes of the second half. But the game at one stage will come down to a game of football and that's when Liverpool will, I feel, take control of the game and then Palace will have to be very, very careful. Well, there are the Palace lads coming out of the, their dressing room there. Nigel Martin's going to play a big part, the first £1 million goalkeeper in Palace's uh, team there. And uh, they don't look too nervous at the moment, Ray, do they? No, they look very relaxed and uh, hopefully they can transfer that onto the field of play as well, Bob. All right, let's now go and join our match commentators, Terry Venables and John Watson. Well, thank you very much, Bob. And as you say, semi-final day has a flavour all of its own. And good afternoon to those of you at home, many of you who are able to fully savour it with us this occasion with uh, the crowd inside Villa Park on a very sunny day. Some supporters have been delayed on the motorway. You may see a few empty spaces even at this stage, but we're expecting a crowd of 39,000 and they're giving the players quite a welcome. In this cathedral of football in the Midlands, which has staged some 40 or more semi-final matches down the years. Liverpool will be playing in their chain strip of all grey because Palace won the toss to wear their normal colours. Liverpool also will have more supporters here, 23,000. They've got the whole of the right-hand end. And uh, at the far end, the Holt end here at Villa Park, we've got some Liverpool supporters and some from Crystal Palace, who in fact have only sold 16,000 of their 18,000 allocation. That's because they sold to members only at uh, Soho's Park. So if you see any empty seats throughout the 90 minutes, that's the reason why. Well, the team news then first, and uh, let's start by looking at Crystal Palace, because Steve Koppel didn't really have very much choice. Six members of his first team squad are injured, including striker Ian Wright, Although John Solarco wears the number 10 shirt, he may not play as a central striker. I think Steve's got a formation in mind that will unfold when the game gets underway. But uh, Gary O'Reilly plays at centre-half because Jeff Hopkins is still injured. Now, as for Liverpool, Kenny Dalglish has, as expected, restored Peter Beardsley to the starting lineup. He was left out in midweek. And his other major decision concerned the full-back positions. And the vote has gone to Gary Gillespie wearing number four and David Burrows wearing number three. So Barry Venison and Steve Staunton are both unlucky in the sense that they're on the bench and Steve Nicol is still injured. Well, it's uh, time to call in a man who was the Crystal Palace coach the last time, the only time before this, that they reached the semi-final of the FA Cup in 1976. And a man whose team are the only side to have beaten Liverpool in their last 23 games. Manager of Tottenham Hotspur, Terry Venables, what are your thoughts? Well, at the moment, I think we've got to accept the fact that it's going to be a very difficult uphill battle for uh, Crystal Palace. But then again, the thing that they've got on their side is, is that um, nobody expects them to win. It's a very tense day, and the, the mere fact that no one expects them to win will make, make them a little more relaxed. But um, they've got an uphill climb, like I say. Liverpool must, for me, be the favourites. Kenny Dalglish and Steve Coppel shaking hands before the start. Do you see it as a, as a tactical sort of match, Terry, or will it be an open game? I think Liverpool will play their normal tactics of a 4-4-2 uh, 
uh, with a lot of movement within the framework of the 4-4-2. Um, and I would, I would expect Crystal Palace to try something different. I think they might pack their midfield a little to uh, reduce the space for the midfield players a little bit to play. But when you do that and leave one up front, you should really then play through the team, the short passing game. They play a longer passing game, which will leave Bright a little stranded on his own. So perhaps they might get caught between the devil and the deep sea if they're not careful. Well, we shall see. George Courtney is the referee, his seventh FA Cup semi-final in 10 years. And uh, the two captains are Jeff Thomas on the left there of uh, Crystal Palace and the well-known figure of Alan Hansen who's uh, created something of a record. I make it his 12th FA Cup semi-final match this afternoon for Liverpool number six and uh, skipper there. I noticed that uh, Bob Wilson and Ray Wilkins referred to Andy Gray as a player who could be a key figure and made the point that he had a short spell here with Aston Villa. And it's going to be interesting to see exactly where he plays in this Palace lineup today because he's been used wide on the right mostly, but he can play as a striker or as a support player and uh, Palace are expecting big things of him. And there's another ex-Aston Villa player, Steve McMahon, who uh, used to be on this patch at one time. And uh, he was Kenny Dalglish's first signing when uh, Kenny became the Liverpool manager. So there are at least two players who know the ground only too well, but indeed both clubs have played here so often that Villa Park is pretty familiar territory. It's... Uh, as I say, a fine afternoon and a feast of football coming up for you. I'm sure you don't need reminding that this is just part one. We have a Lancashire hot pot at uh, half past three. And uh, Crystal Palace in the red and blue stripes will kick off, playing in the first half from left to right. And they are, to say the least, the underdogs. 4-1 against Crystal Palace to win this match with the odds and uh, Liverpool as Bob has said are the holders and the favourites so with some supporters still coming into the ground George Courtney gets the semi-final underway on time and that's Thomas forward straight away for Palace just uh, testing Burrows to me as if Solako is going to play over on the left for Crystal Palace and uh, it may be Phil Barber that's up with Mark Bright that looks like the early formation I'll get a word from Terry in a moment on that as we work out exactly what the tactics are that's Jeff Thomas here's Pardew with McMahon Thomas again and Gary Gillespie gets forward menacingly for Liverpool surrounded by red shirts but he almost found a way through that was Andy Thorne Terry well, I see immediately, I think they're going to play um, three at the back. Shaw will join O'Reilly and Thorne at the back, and they're pushing in tight on the wide players. They're marking across the midfield very tight, and uh, they're going to play Andy Gray up front with Bright and Barber pushing on the left, so they're going to play as tight as they possibly can. Yes, with John Pemberton, the number two, detailed to mark John Barnes by the look of it also. Here's the same. There's Gray, but it's a foul. So Gray will push up when he can to uh, support Bright, and so too will Barber. But uh, as far as central strikers are concerned, Mark Bright having to plough something of a lone furrow, I would think. Here's Burroughs. Russian Beardsley in the middle, so is Barnes. Ray Houghton pulling at the back. Couldn't quite middle that. certainly did. Here's Barnes. And uh, that's Pardew, who's covering for Palace. I think the surprise of the tactics, John, is not that Pemberton's mar marking Barnes, but Salako, who usually plays up front, is playing left side against Ray Allen. That's right. Uh, Steve Coppola, I know, was giving this a lot of thought overnight, uh, what he was going to do with his formation. And that's the way it's looking, and we'll see if it uh, does the trick for the outsiders. Liverpool team, of course, packed with big batch experience. Nobody more so than Hansen here. 
and Glenn Hussein, who would love to play in an FA Cup final. He tells us he's watched it every year back from home in Sweden. Television. And here's a man who's played in one, Andy Thorne. He was in the Wimbledon side that beat Liverpool two years ago, and he's an important figure at the back today for Crystal Palace. This is Richard Shaw. And it's Pemberton. forward again and rush sneaking in this is a, a, a terrific move there Barnes is tight mark just run away and took Pemberton off the line and left the space down the left hand side for Burroughs to come into quite easily this is what they've got to be careful of rush was coming in on the far post but the ball just uh, had too much pace on it for him to reach it forward by Thomas just a reminder of course in both today's semi-finals that there will be extra time if the scores are level after 90 minutes this is Hansen McMahon this time is down the left Barnes Rush coming near post now and Houghton's there, didn't drop for him, nor for Whelan. A really inspired run by Jeff Thomas, the Palace captain. Made lots of ground from his own penalty area. Here's Gray. Good challenge by Hansen, now Barnes. Not sure, this is Barber playing on the left. Black Palace have got two or three naturally left-footed players in the side. There goes Bright. kept the ball in trying to find Pardew this is Salako number 10 wants to find Barber again and the referee has given the free kick against Ray Houghton so it's a promising mo moment for Palace because there is a feeling if they can get at Liverpool it may be from set plays and Andy Thorne and Gary O'Reilly have both gone forward Salako to curl it in. Thorne, O'Reilly and Bright queuing up. And Andy Gray's now gone across to take over. But there wasn't much harm in that. I think that uh, they were looking for a, a free kick similar to the Wimbledon one that they scored with Laurie Sanchez. They lined up the near post with an in-swing uh, free kick, but the de delivery wasn't quite uh, as accurate as uh, Dennis Wise. Yes, that was the goal that beat Liverpool at Wembley, of course, uh, two years ago. That was the last time they lost an FA Cup tie, by the way. Here they are again, chasing the double of the League and Cup. Beardsley running out of space. And, uh, fine setting this for a big match, Villa Park. It's Gillespie with Barber. Forward by Houghton, Gary O'Reilly letting it run. Well, I think they're competing very well in the early stages of the game, Crystal Palace. They know they've got to. But just I'm concerned that they're going to pull them all over the place and get their spaces down the wide areas. Free kick to Liverpool. Richard Shaw staying close to Peter Beardsley, I've noticed. In that uh, Palace system. This is Hansen. My word, he's made some ground there.
looks great. Hansen looks to be in his usual commanding form here, seeing plenty of the ball early on. McMahon. Now it's Houghton. Gillespie's gone down the right for Liverpool. Beardsley. Offside, Gillespie. That's the areas we're talking about. They're running uh, the tight markers off the line so that the fullbacks can get in. And I think Gillespie has got to uh, really justify his position today because it's, as you said earlier, Barry Venison, I think, has played in every cup right around this, uh, this year's cup ties. And uh, I think that. Um, it must be a big disappointment for him, but if he comes in, Gillespie, he's got to justify that, and I think he's got to get down that line a lot. Gillespie did score, of course, in midweek against Wimbledon from that right-back position. That's Thomas, and here's Rush with O'Reilly. Thomas is in there again. They really have settled down, John, very quickly, Crystal Palace. I think they're going about their job well, and they don't seem right throughout the team to have any nerves at all. Well, there was a question mark about whether the occasion would get to the less experienced side, but as you say, they look happy enough at the minute. That's Gray. Here comes uh, Mark Bright, Pardew in the middle with Gray and Barber. That's Pemberton's cross, and John Salako on the far side will reach it. Gillespie. This is McMahon to rush. This precise Liverpool build-up, which has become so familiar. There goes Beardsley. But uh, there's no inferiority complex about this Palace side. Although they lost 9-0 at Liverpool earlier in the season, everybody's made so much of that. It's almost had a counter-reaction, I think, in the Palace camp. And they were very relaxed and uh, together when we were with them at their hotel last night. Looking forward to playing a part in uh, this unique day in the football calendar. Here's Hansen. Whelan. Hansen's virtually in midfield at the moment. He's come forward an awful lot early on. This is McMahon. Barber who got back. Hansen really has been pushing on at every opportunity. Burrows. Here he is again. Well, he's almost a, a free man at the moment, Terry. Yeah, he's coming through because uh, they're playing bright in the middle and uh, Barber and Gray are taking the fullbacks. So the spare man is, in actual fact, Hanson. And if the mid midfielder of Liverpool run forward, he will leave space for him to come through. And he's taking good little sneak positions in behind the forwards to get into good attacking positions. Well, that's obviously what uh, Kenny Dalgleish had in mind. And uh, that's Pemberton with Barnes. Here's Beardsley. Whelan well forward, Rush, Thomas, McMahon, Houghton, that was Sulaco, here's Bright, Gray, he loves to run with the ball Andy Gray but he had too many grey shirts around him there, this is Whelan, Houghton, Andy Gray is a danger, he's, he's very dynamic, uh, he's a little bit hit and miss in time, a little bit inconsistent, he's in inclined to go by three or perhaps fall over the ball, but um, he certainly is a danger, he's, he's up and down that field and they've got to keep an eye on him. That's Gillespie.
So once again, Hansen starts the build-up for Liverpool. And there goes Barnes. Pemberton the marker. Still Barnes. And Barber to clear for Palace. Time seemed to stand still for a second in the penalty area. But it was Barnes who was doing the damage on the left. Here's Burrows. This is Beardsley. And a late challenge. And uh, David Burrows will be spoken to for that. Well, they're catering for most things, Crystal Palace at the moment, John, but when you get uh, John Barnes with a ball at his feet, 1v1, there's not a lot you can do about that. Now, it's a full-time job for uh, Pemberton this afternoon, but I know he was looking forward to it. He's not short of confidence, the uh, right-back of Crystal Palace. Here's McMahon. Pardew. And McMahon... Intercepting, Rush going to the left now, onside, Ian Rush, Liverpool take the lead, and Ian Rush, the ace goal scorer, once again makes it look so easy. Palace never recovered from Pardew losing the ball in midfield to McMahon, and the penetrating pass found out the Palace defence. McMahon, who got the ball from the Palace player Pardew, slide rule ball, isn't it? They're looking for an offside, it never came, and as Nigel Martin narrowed the angle, Rush just jogged the ball past him with his left foot. And that's a moment of Liverpool history, because Ian Rush, with that goal, now becomes the second highest scorer in the history of the club. It's his 241st senior goal for Liverpool, and now only Roger Hunt has more. It'll be very interesting, John, now to see... Um how they go about the game from now on. They've, they've coped fairly well, actually, until now, and they've looked as if they've coped for most things. It was a very risky do, thing to do to try and play offside in that position. I didn't think it was necessary. He could have just run with him. He was going away from goal. Um, but nevertheless, it was a great finish. Yes, it had Ian Rush written all over it, that, didn't it? This is Barnes. So the favourites take the lead. Here's Whelan. And Barnes sneaking in here. This time there is an offside flag. So after a quarter of an hour, Ian Rush with his 32nd goal in the FA Cup alone puts Kenny Dalglish's side in charge in this semi-final. Back to only... Ian Rush, I suppose, uh, has got a chance of reaching the all-time FA Cup scoring record. Dennis Law holds that with 41, but Rushy now has 32 in this competition. More important on the day, he's put Liverpool in front on what's always a tense occasion. And how will Palace react now? This is Barnes. Beardsley, I think Shaw slightly lost his footing there, but he recovered well. Gillespie. I think the uh, the run that Rush is making behind Thorne all the time is a constant worry to O'Reilly. He doesn't know whether to go with him or play him offside. Yes, he certainly got behind both centre-backs, didn't he, when McMahon slid that ball through. Here's McMahon again. And this time, O'Reilly fouls rush, just the point you were making. I know that, uh, with no disrespect to Gary O'Reilly, Steve Coppel was disappointed that Jeff Hopkins wasn't going to be fit for this semi-final. He's had some Achilles trouble. He's with the party, but there was no chance of him playing. And Steve really's had to pick a team here without not just Hopkins and Wright, but four other senior players also missing for Palace. Here's Beardsley. That's 
going to be a Palace free kick. They're also without uh, the likes of Eddie McGoldrick, David Burke, Mark Dennis, Alex Dyer. And they really were down to their last 13 senior players. And now they're a goal down to. waiting in the centre but I think it's going to come of that obviously a team like Crystal Palace have come here they're going to run and work very hard and I think Liverpool know there's a long way to go yet and they'll try and run their legs out by keep passing that ball and make them run hard I think we're going to uh, see a lot more of the threat of rush today as well John I'm sure most of our viewers have been with us from the start and if anybody overslept or has just come in from playing Sunday football <laughs> and you have missed the goal more of it in a moment here's Pardew for Palace a typical Ian Rush effort nice tidy finish from a through ball by Steve McMahon so it's 1-0 to Liverpool this is Beardsley in midfield and now out to Gillespie this is Hansen again the space in front of him as you can see and Barnes is there free kick to Paris there's the passing, uh, passing bouts that we were talking about there. I think it was into 16 passes and making them run. They're trying to try and run their legs out. This is the normal way that Liverpool try to pressurise and work down their opposition. 20 minutes gone in the FA Cup semi-final at Villa Park. Liverpool 1, Crystal Palace 0, courtesy of Ian Rush. Free kick to Palace, fouled by Hansen on Bright. So O'Reilly will make his way forward here into the penalty area. Mark Bright has his arm up and Andy Thorne will take the kick. In fact, Bright's got both arms up now and so is O'Reilly calling for it. That was O'Reilly, but it was also Hussein. And John Salako still playing a withdrawn role on that left-hand side in this Palace formation. Although... We have seen him more often than not as a striker. Here's Gillespie. A bit tight with Thomas. Andy Thorne's made his way forward for the throw, which Salako is going to take. Here he is again. Hussain's header out. Free kick. Beardsley was fouled. And it was Pemberton who fouled him, and Pemberton's relieved to see that the referees made them retake the free kick because for a moment he was completely out of position, Terry. Yeah, I think the ball was rolling in fairness. Um, I think they took it uh, very quick, but the ball was rolling. They're trying to put a little aerial work in now, and this is where Hussein will come into his own. He certainly is magnificent in the air. Well, that was a collision between uh, Peter Beardsley and Richard Shaw. And Shaw's got the worst of it. Beardsley just seemed to carry on running there. And I think he's caught Shaw quite heavily in the face. Just see as uh, Nigel Martin comes out. Oh, I think he, in the end, I think the collision was with his own goalkeeper, Terry. Yeah, I'm sure it was, yeah. But it is quite interesting that Barber's playing that left-hand side to try and stop Gillespie coming out. And Solarco is, in fact, playing very deep. He is playing almost like a, an orthodox left-back, of course, when uh, Houghton goes forward.
Here's Pardew. And that's Mark Price. He shook off his chain there. He's got Jeff Thomas and Andy Gray coming up in the centre. And if he could have got the ball in there, then Palace had a chance. It was the first time they really threatened to open Liverpool up. Here's Solarco. Ray Houghton busying himself on that right-hand side defensively. Then Whelan. Now O'Reilly. And McMahon. Burrows. And Ian Rush seems to have gone down injured on the far side. This is Barnes still. And now it's Burrows and it's an offside flagger. But uh, back on the halfway line there, Terry. I think uh, it was Ian Rush that got injured. Is, uh, looks to be struggling there a little bit, John. I don't know where he's got it. So the player who's put Liverpool in front in this semi-final receiving attention, and Kenny Dalglish watching anxiously. I think it's quite interesting now that Barnes and Rush and Beardsley have all made those little diagonal runs, especially along the 18-yard uh, line there, and just like there where Beardsley was offside. And they're trying to play offside, and it's a real dangerous gamble for what they're going to win, for what they're going to lose. I think that uh, they've got to be careful. They've already come unstuck once and, um, where Liverpool scored a goal. And the way he's moving today, Rush, is, um, that looks like the way he's only, only way he's going to get stopped. I think he's a bit like Marco van Basten when you said the other day the only way to stop him is to tie his legs together. <laughs> or bust it between his knees, though, something like that. Well, the applause is for Ian Rush. He's back on his feet. And uh, he seems to have this happy knack of scoring when it matters in the FA Cup, doesn't he? Two in the final on two occasions and one today. With 25 minutes gone at Villa Park, Liverpool lead by that goal. That's the same with Bright Barber. Palace have only ever beaten uh, Liverpool on one occasion in the uh, last 18 meetings back in uh, 1971 at Selhurst Park and uh, they've lost twice to them this season 2-0 at uh, Palace and of course the 9-0 at Anfield so this semi-final up to now has gone according to the form book well, I think it has, but I think we can still say that they're, they've set about the job well, and I think they're doing quite well at Crystal Palace. Obviously disappointed to be uh, losing, but they're still in the game up to now. It's a mistake by Thomas, which has given Liverpool possession again, and McMahon. Beardsley brings Burrows into the game. Barnes has made a run through the inside left channel. Andy Gray is the player chasing back with Burrows. the job pretty well and then Burrows fouled him that's the second offence by David Burrows and uh, George Cook has already had a word with him once they've done very well there Andy Gray uh, he's, he's very strong he's very determined and he's done his job right but he's inclined to uh, want to lay on the ground a little while towards Mark Bright. Ronnie Whelan got there. This is Pardew. Bright again. And there's Hansen now with Bright, who gets the ball in, and Hussain's in trouble against Barber. It's a corner. Well, he recovered well. Corner to Palace now. Have they got a chance with Thorne and O'Reilly going up? Thorne into the near post position, O'Reilly behind him, Bright taking the far post. That's the lineup. And O'Reilly with Grobelar, who punched well. But here's Solarco. Barnes. 
I think you've done well, Grobbler, there, because they were in trouble. I don't like the way they're marking on the near post. I, I feel sometimes Liverpool are a little bit vulnerable at set pieces defending. Well, for anybody just uh, coming in late, Liverpool lead by one goal to nil. The scorer, Ian Rush. But, uh, a feast of football for you to look forward to today, of course. Here's Barnes. I'm sure our audience includes a whole host of uh, professional players and managers. All of whom have played a part on the road to Wembley in some shape or form, no doubt. Here's Palace with Barber. Looking for Bright, who had pulled away from Hansen, but Burroughs came in with a covering header. They're really sticking at it, John. I think they're working tremendously out at uh, Crystal Palace. And I think that, um, really, if it, just for that one moment, they still could have been this as a, a, a goal of straw. Um, I just feel now that they've, they've got to get a, a bit of joy, perhaps a goal before half-time, which will give them the real lift that they need. Yes, they did contribute to their own downfall a bit on the goal because uh, it was when Pardew gave the ball away to McMahon that... Uh, there was no turning back then for Palace. The defence was split with one pass. Here's Beardsley. But Jeff Thomas is having a good match in midfield, number eight. Really leading the side well. In, in actual fact, the passing has been quite good today, Liverpool. Not quite as we expect. And they've been caught in possession quite a few times, owing to the fact that they're pressing the ball, Crystal Palace, very hard. Now, Ian Rush, who we saw injured about five or six minutes to go, ago, cannot carry on. So here's an unexpected change in the proceedings. Steve Staunton is going to come on. And the man who scored the goal by which Liverpool lead will play no further part in this semi-final. Well, Disappointed perhaps, Ian Rush. Perhaps we won't be seeing some more danger of uh, Ian Rush after all. Free kick to Palace. O'Reilly's up there. And Grobelar comes out. Here's Jeff Thomas. But George Courtney has whistled. Now then, let's have a look at what Liverpool are going to do. Steve Staunton is wearing 14, and he's taken up a left-hand side position in midfield, and I think that means Barnes up front with Beardsley, don't you, Terry? Without a shadow of a doubt, yes. And he really was looking sharp today, uh, Rush. And uh, I think he was going to give him... They won't be sorry he's gone off, I shouldn't think. Well, John Barnes, of course, used to that central striking role. Indeed, he played there in midweek against Wimbledon when Beardsley was omitted. So, uh, indeed, we'll watch that closely because some people, of course, believe he might even be pushed up there for England, matter of opinion. Here's Barnes again. McMahon looking for Beardsley. Richard Shaw's got to be quick here. He is. This is Barber. And Bright makes the run. And it just dropped the grubber line. What's interesting, John, is that Pemberton's gone with Barnes and playing centre-half and... O'Reilly's coming out here and playing against Staunton. That's a real surprise to me. Well, that was Staunton who knocked that ball into Barnes. And Ray Houghton's made a dangerous run from outside right and Andy Thorne covered. I understand it's a rib injury that uh, has forced Ian Rush out of the action. And uh, Liverpool having to press one of their substitutes into service and Barnes into a new position. And here is Steve Staunton. He played against Wimbledon on Tuesday in this uh, left-sided role. Andy Gray. Well, Burrows has now committed three fouls, and he, uh, he knocked Gray down, but he also hurt himself on that occasion. In fact, I think the Liverpool man is probably in a worse state than Gray. I don't think Barnes will have any problem um, moving into a central uh, position, John. I feel O'Reilly might uh, feel a bit more strange going out to the right back to Mark, um, Mark Staunton. Well, O'Reilly's now gone forward for the free kick. So has Andy Thorne. They're the two players helping out Mark Bright in there for height. And O'Reilly's there, but there's some pushing and shoving, and it's a free kick. I'm just wondering whether they've obviously been told to mark those players and they've stayed with them. I think they've got uh, word onto them now for Pemberton to go back to the right-back spot. 
Yes, he's moved back across now to cover uh, Staunton, as you said, and uh, Shaw is still shadowing Beardsley in the centre. Here is Pemberton, in fact, back where he was. Well, Ian Rush certainly left his impression on the semi-final before he was forced off with that injury, because he's the scorer of the only goal so far as Liverpool lead Crystal Palace here at Villa Park. to half time here and uh, as you can see there are a few empty seats on that far side that's because as I said Palace didn't sell their full allocation of tickets uh, because they were restricted to members only so the crowd will probably be a little below 40,000 uh, Kelly Dalglish's club took up their full allocation gets the better of Barnes and starts Palace moving. Good ball too. As uh, Jeff Thomas well forward. O'Reilly again. Solako. Pemberton. Cardew well forward. And Thomas here. And now Gray. Barber wide on the left. Solako against Howe. And Palace forced the corner off Ronnie Whelan. Now Andy Gray will go across to curl this in. And uh, the plan will be to try and get the flick on, I would think, from either Thorne or O'Reilly at the near post. Six and five. Phil Barber almost on the line. And it came off Gary Gillespie in the end, who was uh, defending there from the near post. This is short. Pardew and Thomas combining. Barber didn't quite get that round the defender. The same was in the way. But uh, Palace having a decent share of the play anyway, Terry. I think they're doing very well. Um, they're certainly not out of the gun yet. If they can pressurise them the way they are and make them give the ball away, they. They've, they've got a chance to uh, get some encouragement from that and certainly at corner kicks, I just feel that they might have a bit of good fortune on that as well. But with 36 minutes gone, it remains Liverpool 1, Crystal Palace 0. Ian Rush, the goal scorer, off the pitch injured and uh, replaced by Staunton. This is Burrows, the flaxer. Ball was out. It's a throw in. George Courtney was in charge of the... Marseille-Benfica European Cup match in midweek and he's also off to the World Cup to be the English referee in Italy. And uh, up to now the players have given him no trouble today. That's been played in a good spirit. And up to now, going Liverpool's way. Pemberton. Cardew. is Thorn. Pardew did well there against Barnes and Whelan. This is Bright back to Pardew. Barb is over to his left. But it's uh, Solako he tries to find and it's a Liverpool throw. And again Palace running out of possession. Whelan. up the loose ball it was from Sorako that it came to him this is Gillespie it's 
still Gary Gillespie. Barnes is waiting in the centre. Staunton's joining in there now. And Liverpool force a corner. Seven minutes left in the first half. Ray Houghton's going to take it. Glenn Hussain is making his way forward from the back. Mark Bright coming back with him to Mark. Barnes. Thorne. Ray. Hansen. Beardsley. Just one stop away from Wembley. Gillespie for Liverpool. Mahn, Barnes, and now Steve Staunton. Saw the chance for a shot, came back off Thorne. that ball uh, delivered where it was by Burrows. So five minutes left in the first half here at a sunbathed Villa Park with uh, the second part of our double bill to come up this afternoon. 3.30 kick-off at Main Road. Probably the uh, players of Manchester United and Oldham among our viewers, I would think. to beat there and, uh, Alan Hansen gives away the corner which will give Palace some hope Farber will go across to take it So Riley jumping, but Grobelar took it so cleanly. Bruce Grobelar hasn't conceded many goals in the FA Cup. One of them, of course, scored by our guest today, Ray Wilkins, in the last round. But there was no possibility there of Grobelar doing the same thing as he did then. Took it very comfortably. Here's Beardsley finding Staunton. O'Reilly with Barnes. minutes left in the first half. Liverpool lead 1-0. McMahon, the man who's passed, provided rush with that opening. Now Gillespie. Thorne with Barnes. Barnes wandering across to the right now and causing Palace some concern. Offside. He's offside. That's that same run again there, John. They're just trying to get across the back of the defence. And uh, it, it did look offside, man. Liverpool aiming to reach the FA Cup final for the fourth time in five years under Kenny Dalglish's management. Andy Gray did that well Thomas Cardiff Barber 
Savarko out left. Bright waiting in the centre for a cross. Wasn't a good enough run. Hansen found McMahon. This is where Liverpool sometimes can be so dangerous. Barnes. Palace are getting players back now, but the run is by Peter Beardsley. The same run behind the central defenders. Nobody to his right at first, and he had to hold on. Staunton. Now they've opened it up again now. McMahon. Well, the shot was always on there. So what's your overall feeling about this half, Terry? I think it's been a good game. I think that... Um... Crystal Palace have done very well. They've, they've caught Liverpool continuously in possession, which is not always a very easy thing to do. They've worked very hard. I think the two midfield players have competed against McMahon and Whelan very, very well. And Thorne was organised well at the back. But Liverpool lead 1-0. And uh, although the man who scored the goal is off the pitch now injured, it's uh, difficult in some circumstances to see Liverpool letting a game go when they have the chance to take a grip on it, we shall see. There's a minute left in the first half, so there is quite a long way to go. And as you rightly said, Terry, Palace haven't folded after that goal. They've uh, had a decent share of the proceedings territorially. Here's Pardew. Thomas. Thorne. And Mark Bright's the target here. Hussein's header out, then Hansen. Appeals for handball against McMahon, but Palace have possession. Thorne. He's looking for Thomas. Barber. Against Houghton. Now it's Salaka. Attacking the right-hand flank, but again, the ball in by Salaka wasn't a good enough quality to trouble Liverpool. They seem to be getting, especially Salaka, seems to be getting good crossing positions with space, and he doesn't seem to be able to clear the first defender. He's getting no height on his crosses at all. That's what's made it frustrating for Mark Bright, really, because he's been taking up a reasonable position in there, but... Uh, That's right. It? Yeah. It seems O'Reilly, funny enough, it seems to be dealing at this moment in time, anyway, uh, with Barnes better than he was with, uh, with Ian Rush. And, of course, Liverpool now don't have the same threat down the left-hand side as when, when Barnes has gone from there. Here is Barnes in his new role, and there is O'Reilly at his back, forcing him to play it to Hansen. It was Burrows who was well forward there. Thomas, a bit tight maybe for Barber. So we're in time added on for stoppages at the end of the first half in this first FA Cup semi-final of the day. Bright might find a way through. The gate was shut in his face there. <laughs> so the first half draws to a close with Liverpool, the holders and favourites, leading in this FA Cup semi final. A goal scored on 15 minutes by Ian Rush, which puts Kenny Dalglish in good heart, although Rush's injury soon afterwards meant a substitution. But the man who made the goal with a precise pass from midfield was Steve McMahon, and it's that moment, really, which separates the two teams, and that alone at half-time, as uh, in this bright sunshine, they go back to their dressing rooms with the score. Liverpool 1, Bristol Palace 0. Well, Ray, I think Palace will be quite relieved that they're back in the game after an ominous first 30 minutes. That's right. I think the first 30 minutes, Liverpool were quite majestic in actual fact, Bob. Their passing of the ball and the movement off the ball was, was wonderful to watch. Um, Palace just weren't at the races, really. Uh, the last 15 minutes, they've actually come back in the game. But they, I, I honestly feel they've got to try and get the ball in the Liverpool box as much as possible and follow up and play on the second ball. Significance with uh, Ian Rush being out? 
I don't think so, no. I think that you just swap one international for another and it's the, <laughs> I think... Well, here they come. Here they come for the second half. Bruce Grubble, asked Steve McMahon there. The Liverpool lads with that uh, one goal cushion at the moment. Crystal Palace have it all to do. Let's uh, rejoin Terry Venables and John Moss. Time for a cup of tea, maybe. Um, can now look forward to the second half of this match and later on today. Not need another reminder, I'm sure. The second semi final at Main Road. The uh, half time interval did give us both a chance to look at the uh, goal again, didn't it, Terry? And any suggestion of offside was certainly wiped out when we saw it from. Uh, from that angle because uh, Rush timed his run perfectly, didn't he? No question at all. Um, Thorne, who liked to have been a little bit deeper and be behind his other two central defenders, was caught um, on his feet there flat, and I think that uh, McMahon was able to play it past him. Um, Rush made a good diagonal ball, uh, ball uh, run behind him, and I think that O'Reilly just got caught flat also, and I, I think he just tried to um, appeal for offside, really, at the last second. And while you've been talking, we've seen that Barry Venison is on at right back in place of Gary Gillespie. So Liverpool have now used both their substitutes at this comparatively early stage. Palace haven't used either of theirs yet. And uh, we'll check on that too as they come out. But uh, Rudy Hedman there is one of them. And uh, the uh, injuries that Liverpool have picked up have obviously meant reorganisation and an opportunity earlier I suppose than either Venison or Staunton expected Terry. I think you're right I mean he has played in every round it looks like he's going to continue that uh, run Barry Venison who actually uh, came on as a substitute I recall in the final itself against uh, Everton there's Ian Rush back changed disappointing end to the day for him but his goal may still prove priceless we shall see We mentioned uh, Alan Hansen there at half-time, uh, Ray Wilkins was speaking about him. His passing is exceptional, there's no doubt about it. But he's so patient, he's almost waiting and waiting for the right moment of delivery. The delivery of the ball is so important. And on the other hand, I think that Thorne also has been a big influence as far as Crystal Palace has been concerned. Well, let's see what Palace can do about it now in the second half as they attack the whole end here at Villa Park. John Pemberton, a lovely run early on. And a chance for Barber and Venison, and it's a shot, and it, it's there by Bright. It's Mark Bright straight from the kickoff. After John Salako's shot didn't quite get there, Bright certainly did, and Palace are level. What a dramatic start to the second half, and Liverpool are stunned. Well, it was John Pemberton here who takes so much credit. It was an inspired run. The cross met first of all by Venison, then Solarco off target, but Mark Bright hammers that left-footed into the unguarded goal. Well, what a start to the second half for Crystal Palace. They are level and Steve Koppel is back in business. When the play dies down, Terry, I'll get your reaction, but the way Palace have started the half, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen next. Here's Beardsley. Well, I think the start of the second half was just an explosion. Pemberton got some incredible pace from nowhere, burst by two players, and there was two other chances there before Bright actually smashed it home. I mean, we've got a terrific game around now. Well, John Pemberton, whose job today really was to mark John Barnes before the Liverpool switch, has suddenly become a thorn in Liverpool's side in an attacking sense, because that was, without question, the sort of run that can turn a match, and it's put this one back right on the boil. I don't know what uh, was said to the Palace players in the dressing room by Steve Coppel and Ian Bradfoot and Alan Smith, the management team, but whatever it was, they came out with renewed zest, and they've got an early reward. Salako. This is Staunton. 
Burrows. That left-hand side of Liverpool was really stretched by that run. Here's McMahon. Whelan. Venison, whose first uh, duty when he came on was really to try and stop that Palace attack. He was close to Barber on the cross. That uh, fell for Solaco in the end. And that's a foul by Venison on Barber. Quite a stiff challenge in actual fact. It gives Terry Venables a chance to reflect on the way this semi-final has turned. Well, it, it really has exploded. And I think that um, we, we've got 40 odd minutes ahead of us. I think that uh, we're going to be terrific. Pemberton, I mean, I, I didn't know where he came from. The, the, the pace he showed was just was, was fantastic, John, wasn't it? Yes, he, he he just seemed to make up his mind to make that run right from the kickoff, and Liverpool just seemed to be caught out by it, didn't they, on that flank? That's right. He's a he's quite a he's a great lad off the pitch, John Pemberton. He's had uh, as many of Steve Coppel's players have experience in the lower divisions at the places like Rochdale and Crewe. Being part of this occasion means so much to him. And he seemed to just suddenly make up his mind he wanted to leave his impression on the semi-final. Well, they certainly haven't shown any nerves. They look like they're, they're loving every minute at the moment. And Bright jumping again. And there's Barber. And there's Andy Gray. And nearly Pardew. But so Staunton was there. As I said earlier, I think O'Reilly's dealing better with Barnes than he was with Rush. Barnes wants it to feed all the time, and he's quite happy there. But uh, Rush obviously wanted to get behind him and constantly uh, make diagonal runs and threaten the back of him. Andy Gray has got a low flash point, actually, at times, and he got involved there with a couple of Liverpool players, and George Courtney having to administer his first serious lecture of this semi-final. He's a volatile character, Andy Gray, but he's very talented. And Jeff Thomas, the captain, may have to go forward and just uh, also receive a warning word on behalf of his team because George Courtney is determined to keep this under the calm control that he had in the first half. We've been playing five minutes in the second and it's Liverpool 1, Crystal Palace 1. And if you were making a cup of tea and uh, taking rather a long time over it, I suppose you could conceivably have missed the goal before you got back in front of the television. <laughs> Well, Liverpool just caught completely cold, weren't they? I think they were still having a cup of tea in front of the television. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's put this game back in the balance. And uh, from the neutral point of view, who's complaining? And he might be wondering now whether that goal he scored is going to prove as important after all. On by Barnes. This is Barber. And there's a late challenge there. A late challenge there. Steve McMahon got involved with Phil Barber. And that was after the ball had gone. see him catch the leg right of the game's played so fast these days uh, quite often those look worse than they really are unless you're on the receiving end of it John <laughs> That's a record, yeah. anyway Barber's all right I'm pleased to say and Palace are all right at the moment it's their supporters who are celebrating with chunks of Eagles Eagles which of course is the club nickname by Pardew, Bright is chasing, Hussain there. And just a reminder again, if uh, you hadn't uh, heard me the first time, there would be extra time today if this was a draw at 90 minutes, and of course in the other semi-final too. And Houghton gets away from McMahon's pass and completely slighted his shot. Actually, the run was, was good, the ball was good, and it sat up just nicely for him, but just to finish, it's the hard bit.
so the underdogs of Crystal Palace coming out for the second half full of fire and pulling the, the tie round straight away Pemberton's cross, John, actually, in fact, was great quality at the end of a very fast run, and Barber was nearly the one to head it in the net. Yes, he was, and Salaka was there too, wasn't he? It bore out Malcolm Allison's point, really, that they wanted a few more players supporting in the penalty area. Well, they certainly got that. They did support, but they did gamble, and the gamble did pay off. That's absolutely correct, and uh, it's certainly given a new edge to this semi-final now. It's level at 1-1. first half and from Pemberton over on that right hand side there's real service in prospect now and Liverpool have got to scratch their heads and find a way of cutting off that supply O'Reilly's up so are two defenders Staunton and of course the calming influence of Gillespie also missing now in that Liverpool defence remember and he looked offside but he's not it's bright the ball's out now. <laughs> Ten minutes gone in the second half. Still Villa Park bathed in semi-final sunshine. but uh, I don't think he was expecting that the second half would start quite like that. Here's Venison. And his team now have got to rebuild their position. And uh, just for a moment, a quiet time for uh, Nigel Martin. He's uh, been pretty well protected, really, apart from the goal. standing up with Ian Brantford there doing the pointing Palace whose main priority this season is survival in the first division they feel they're only a few points away from that now this was something of a bonus the FA Cup went and uh, they responded to it well here's Hansen Barnes there's nobody there for Liverpool that's a loose ball by John Barnes stand and Terry See, I think uh, they have missed Rush, John. Uh, not so much from the changeover from Barnes to Rush, they've not lost a lot. But from Staunton coming in to that left side, he's not given them the threat down that left side that there was earlier in the game. Header on by Cardio. This is Thomas for Palace. Now, oh, good interchange between him and Gray. Then it was Bright. Palace are playing a bit of football now too, aren't they? Staunton on the far side. Pemberton challenges him foul. Again, was the player making strides down that flank, and he's uh, getting some space. Staunton and Burrows have got to keep their wits about them over there now. This is uh, 
Barry Venison. Barnes taking up a position by the penalty spot. Whelan now. Beardsley goes to the right. Nice little run. Richard Shaw is with him. And well played too by the number three. Only 21, Richard Shaw. Palace through and through. He's come from the youth team. Such a big day, for, uh, particularly for the Palace players and their families, because they haven't been used to this kind of thing. And uh, Steve Coppel has, of course, as a player for Manchester United. At the moment, John, it looks like Crystal Palace are relishing the day so far more than Liverpool. They can't get their passing movements to get it together, and they have actually done what Steve Coppel wanted. They have broke the rhythm down. Thomas, the same. Houghton, number eight. Venison. Oh, Barber. And Brightson marked in the middle if he can find him early. He couldn't, but it's still Barber. And Gray's made ground over on that far side as well. Now, that's his header. He's gone down in the challenge from Burroughs. It was a mistake initially by Venison that put Barber in. And Mark Bright, just for a moment there, was completely clear in the middle. I don't know where the central defenders were in that split second, but here's one of them now, it's Hansen. Houghton. Beardsley. And Liverpool's passing game seems to, as you just said, have broken down. What they're prepared to do, Crystal Palace, is not just go towards the ball and stand off four or five yards. They're getting very close to the ball and putting the uh, Liverpool players very much under pressure. Well, that was the way that uh, certain people felt they should play against Kenny Dalglish's team. And it's working at the moment. Hansen's header gives Palace more possession. Quarter of an hour got in the second half in this FA Cup semi-final. Bright again, and away by Whelan from near the line. Thomas. Liverpool have a lot of defending to do at present, and they're not doing it with a great deal of composure, I would have to say. Barry Venison there getting into a real mix-up. Bright's in there again. Whelan. Barnes. It's chested down by Staunton for Burroughs. McMahon is the player on the left wing. Andy Thorne is the defender. Houghton. Barnes. And Barnes again. Houghton's in the middle. And Beardsley's there as well for Liverpool, and it hits Richard Shaw. A few hopeful appeals for hands, but uh, nothing serious. It's certainly the best move they've had this after. But here come Palace with Thomas, and on the far side, Mark Bright's there again. Andy Gray's in the middle this time, so is Thomas. And there's Thomas! Oh, and Robillard ran it on the line! An extraordinary 60 seconds. First, Liverpool nearly made an opening and then Mark Bright with a surging run down the right got a beautiful ball in and it's Andy Gray who beats the defender and what a good save well, there's a fantastic change of ends there from, from being 2-1 up they could have easily been 2-1 down John well it, it, it could have as you say yes both defences were struggling there it's developing into a really good game, this semi-final. Sometimes they're nervous, tense affairs without much incident, but in this second half especially, the game in general has really come to life. And uh, the crowd joining in to lift the occasion as Liverpool have the free kick, it's Staunton. And Bright is now defending for Palace. Whelan, Hussain, Beardsley. Few ricochets. Well, 
the sheer uncertainty of the FA Cup is what gives it its glamour, isn't it, and its uh, magic, and uh, you can never predict what's going to happen on these one-off occasions, can you? Well, we spoke about incidents and good movements and finishing, but uh, that really was a fantastic save from Grobola. You see him find another six inches from out his arm there. Yes, it was a typical example of what good reactions he has, wasn't it? And uh, Palace had done well again to get people forward in the box. Gray it was who nearly scored. Now it's the same getting forward for Liverpool. But uh, falling over in the process. And Jeff Thomas finds Phil Barber. Grobelaar, so athletic on his line and uh, made a save there that could just have tipped the scales in this cup tie. We'll have to wait and see how significant it proves. I'm sure Nigel Martin would have admired it from the other end. Bright still giving Hanson some difficulties. Gray. Oh, what a good back heel. John Pepperton, I think, taken by surprise. But he's fought so well to win it back. Now McMahon for Liverpool. Forward by Staunton. O'Reilly is with Barnes. Big kick. And uh, George Courtney wants a word. It's Ronnie Whelan who's in trouble. So Liverpool in front after a quarter of an hour. Palace level within a minute of the second half starting. One each in the semi-final. Palace with the free kick. It's the same. We've been playing 20 minutes now in the second half. This is Pardew for Palace. Precisely the right thing, getting out the full 18 yards to block Steve McMahon. And here Palace were really opened up. Beardsley into Barnes. McMahon is starting his run now. Nobody with him. And Martin is there to make a very telling save. So both goalkeepers have now excelled themselves in this very exciting period of play. McMahon from midfield was unchecked there with the run. Oh, will we be having extra time, I wonder? Nearly halfway through the second half, one each. Hanson for Liverpool, oh, Pemberton again. Hanson got a second chance to find Staunton. And now Barnes, onside. Houghton and Beardsley making runs to his right. Good block by Andy Thorne, who was covering uh, O'Reilly. This is Hanson, Whelan. Oh, good play by Barnes. Whelan! The last five or ten minutes, John, looks like Liverpool are picking it up a bit more and they're getting back into the game. From now on, there should be more spaces appearing, and uh, that's the sort of uh, opportunity that Liverpool like to take advantage of. Andy Gray. That was David Burrows who he collided with. Certainly the painful memory of that 9-0 defeat. Now wiped from Steve Coppel's mind as uh, Crystal Palace hold Liverpool in this semi-final. Indeed, have taken the game to them for much of this second half. But as Terry Venables says, Liverpool showing in the last five minutes that there's a resilient edge to them that we know all about. Beardsley to Barnes. And the Flair players beginning to get into the game a bit now. Barnes and Beardsley. Forcing Andy Thorne across. Barnes 
It's back to Burrows. See what I mean here, John? They're getting so close that every time the ball is passed, the foot's just appearing. Can't. And there were three of them round in there, which is great. Thomas. Man, good tackle. Free kick. Quickly taken. Barnes. Now they've waved Andy Thorne up as well. Andy Gray has placed the ball. That's his cross. And Bright's there. O'Reilly's there! And Palace! Are they in front? Yes, they are! Liverpool stood there and could really not believe it. And Gary O'Reilly from the back found room in the penalty area. And from the set play, which people felt be a Palace strength or maybe a Liverpool weakness. O'Reilly drives the ball past Grobelar and just for a moment the whole ground seemed to freeze. But it was a good goal and it's 2-1 Palace. Well, there was there was a set piece he was talking about. They certainly do look by little stunt on their first chance to clear it and missed it completely. And I think that Malcolm Harris's point about being physically stronger, I wouldn't say is necessarily correct throughout the side, but certainly in the back four they look, and, and the central defence, they look to have appeared a little tired, I think. Well, let's just gather our thoughts, because Gary O'Reilly has enabled Crystal Palace to come from 1-0 down in this semi-final to lead 2-1 against the holders and the hot favourites. What a story we could have in the making here, but this is Barnes for Liverpool. O'Reilly's now got to mark him. Cardi was back there. Well, opportunity beckons Crystal Palace, the underdogs. Kenny Dalglish now is the worried man. This is Staunton. Header out by Thorne. in the 9-0 that's his first goal of the season he wouldn't have been playing if Jeff Hopkins had been fit what a story that could be Beardsley to Houghton that's Venison's cross they're appealing for offside and it is well from the other side of the ground you get an idea of how Andy Gray's kick caused confusion Bright was in there first but that's O'Reilly's thundering shot with the right foot from close range 2-1 to Palace. And listen to their supporters just at the moment. Here's Pardew. Is there going to be an upset, or will Liverpool, with all this experience of the big occasion, come late in the game as they've done so often before? You can never, ever rule them out. I think it was Ray Wilkins who said that if Palace are going to do it, they're going to do it in 90 minutes. Well, the chance is there now for the taking. Nigel Martin's save from Steve McMahon suddenly becomes very important. Same.
Burrows coming up for Liverpool. Now Staunton. Barnes. O'Reilly. George caught into a close view corner. Beardsley has gone across to take it. And Glenn Hussein is up in the penalty area. Barnes and Staunton are taking up near post positions. And it was cleared by Phil Barber. Defending at the near post. Not the sort of delivery Beardsley really wanted to get in there. But he's got another chance now. John Pemberton, corner, number three. Barnes is in there, Whelan's in there, and Barnes again. Oh, and away, almost on the line. Jeff Thomas, I think. The captain, corner again. Barnes again, and this time it will be claimed. It was a vital clearance, and I'm pretty certain it was Jeff Thomas behind Nigel Martin who got the ball away from danger. Anson and Bright. Barber. Just over a quarter of an hour of the 90 minutes remaining. I put it that way because, of course, if Liverpool were to equalise now, we could well be on to extra time. But Palace are leading 2-1 at this stage. It's Alan Hansen. This is McMahon. Out. Barnes is hovering there. Oh, it's Burrows! What a save by Martin! But was he offside anyway? I've got a feeling there may have been a flag. But Martin didn't know that, did he? He had to make the save, and how well he did it. Burroughs held his head in despair, but I think it, when he looked across, he may have been flagged offside. We still shouldn't take away from the save. I mean, it was really a fantastic save there. It looked in no doubt he would score. Yes, the arms were up, and so was the flag. But uh, it was a warning to Palace because Burroughs got himself into a very advanced position there, which Liverpool, of course, have got to do now. They've got to start taking risks with deeper players. There are 14 minutes left in this FA Cup semi-final if the score stays this way. And those supporters in the background on, uh, on that side, Palace following, certainly hope it does. Just a reminder as well, I'm sure most of you have been with us all the way through, but Ian Rush, the goal scorer for Liverpool, went off injured in the first half. Gary Gillespie went off at half-time. And uh, somehow or other, the team said there was a little bit of spark. Foul. The Palace have certainly gained an awful lot in belief in the second half. And Mark Bright was the player who was knocked over. And this free-kick position from which Andy Gray delivered the ball that gave... O'Reilly is chance for the second goal. He's in there again, O'Reilly, with Bright. And Jeff Thomas falls over with Barry Venison, and in fact, Liverpool are given a free kick in the penalty area. Barnes, O'Reilly stretched here, he's really stretched. And he needed a bit of help. A call has been given. He felt he was pushed, Gary O'Reilly, but I think he struggled a bit to match Barnes' pace, to be honest. Liverpool's corner. Hussein forward again. Two against Barnes on the near post. This is where he made the goal for England, of course, against Brazil from a corner like that. Staunton.
Whelan. Beardsley. Barnes. That's trickled off O'Reilly. Liverpool are forcing a succession of left-wing corners in their bid to save the game. It's a question of whether they can get a flick on because Liverpool now seem to be practising the near post corner like every other team. And that won't do. I sometimes wonder if they could vary it a bit, Terry. Well, they normally do, actually. They normally vary their corners a lot. I've never seen them consistently in the near post corner like that. But uh, it was a... It was a uh, not a very good delivery at all. It didn't seem to take any time over it. This is Hansen for Liverpool. So the holders of the FA Cup, 2-1 down, trying to salvage the situation as Hansen comes forward from the back. Tries to find McMahon, but Nigel Martin is gathering everything fairly comfortably just at present. Looking for Beardsley. Well, Liverpool have really got to fight for their lives now, haven't they? It's a free kick. Salako on Houghton. Ten minutes to go, and trouble here for Palace, possibly. Mark Bright has gone back to help them defend. Barnes, Whelan and Hussain waiting to come in in a line of three as uh, Staunton and Venison address the ball. Staunton to Venison. Right across the goal, McMahon! Oh, it's there! It's 2-2! Two -two. Steve McMahon! It comes out to Steve McMahon, and that's a fabulous shot. Two all. Well, it was a first-class finish. They just got caught up in there, Crystal Palace, on a free kick. It was a, had a lot of invention in it. No chance for Nigel Martin. That was as true as an arrow from Steve McMahon. Barry Venison, the substitute, who provided the cross from a cleverly worked free kick. And as they used to say in Bill Shankly's time and since, you never rule Liverpool out. And with ten minutes to go, it's all square again. But what a semi-final. Where do we go from here? Extra time, perhaps? I don't know where we're going, but I'm certainly enjoying it, John. Well, you, I think, Terry, 40,000 inside the ground and millions at home. What a football match. Beardsley. Oh, look at this. Staunton. Penalty. Pemberton on Staunton. George Courtney has pointed the spot, and Pemberton is distraught. Well, I'm not sure about that from here. Staunton is in the box, there's no doubt about that. But was he pushed? Well, the referee couldn't have been closer, could he? You couldn't fault George Courtney's positioning, and somebody has said too much. Poor John Pemberton is now being booked as well. And in a matter of a couple of minutes, the whole scene here has changed. Steve Staunton was the player who went down. Liverpool have been given a penalty from which they've had mixed luck this season. They've missed a few, they've scored a few, but now the million-pound goalkeeper, Nigel Martin, has to face John Barnes. The Palace players are talking to Barnes. I'm not sure what's being said. George Courtney has booked Pemberton. He's given the penalty kick. And the cup holders could strengthen their grip on the trophy here. scores the goalkeeper went the right way but the kick was true in the corner and 
and Liverpool lead by three goals to two. And from being 2-1 up, Palace are suddenly jumped on their backsides and can't really believe what's happened to them. Most of all, Pemberton. Well, it's an incredible turnaround in just the two or three minutes. And uh, to be fair, it looked like Liverpool wasn't going wasn't to do it. And they got that uh, very good free kick, and now they're in front. We've got a slight problem here as well with people on the pitch, you know, Terry. I mean, the fences have come down, we all know the reasons for that. Uh, but the, after the last two goals, there have been people in celebration, I have to say, not misbehaving, but it's something which in the present climate, the FA are going to have to look at. I'm not trying to take anything away from the joy of the occasion, in which Liverpool lead 3-2. After being 2-1 down, it almost seems like half a second ago. I never thought we'd get a game like this, did you? No, but I, I, must, I must say, earlier in the game, when Crystal Palace was getting out the back four, they didn't look comfortable at all, Liverpool. And, uh, and certainly, I know that Liverpool's going to take the game to them, but I think they've just settled back into their first half type of game and not thrown people forward and gambled to try and really press their advantage on. I want to ask you in a minute, when the ball goes out, whether you actually thought that was a penalty. I think we should try and clear that up, uh, not trying to criticise George Courtney. He may well have been right. It's a corner first, though. Let's deal with that. To Palace, because you couldn't rule out a third goal for them now, could you, the way this match has gone? Thorne has gone on to the near post. O'Reilly is up there as well. That's Barnes defending. O'Reilly, bit of a shove maybe, Barnes. And Peter Beardsley won't reach that. Was it a penalty, Terry? Well, I think that uh, he certainly made contact with the back, back of his legs. I don't think it was intentional, but the decision is like uh, the game. It just could have gone either way. Yeah, that's fair confidence. It went Liverpool's way for sure. This is uh, Solako. And that's Shaw, high and wide. But they were nearly in trouble again at that corner, Liverpool, weren't they? The Crystal Palace has certainly given them uh, a lot of trouble at set pieces. John Pemberton has had such a mixed afternoon. Remember, he made that Palace equaliser. And then, as Staunton got called, well, he did, he did make contact with his back, but my view was it took Staunton a little while to go down. That's right. In fact... It's the same for Storm. Storm's had a very quiet game as well, and he's ended up uh, being responsible for the third goal. Well, they'll argue about that one in the uh, up and down the country, everybody watching in the millions of homes, so we'll let you be uh, as good a judge as us. Here's Palace on the attack again with Thomas. And now it's Shaw. Barnes, and it's opening up again for Beardsley on the left. It came via Pemberton, but he's got enough pace to shake Beardsley off. Just over three minutes, Liverpool three, Crystal Palace two, in one of the most exciting semi-finals, or certainly the second half, that I can remember. And the emotions on the bench, well, they must feel they've been on a roller coaster right over there. Steve Coppel is standing. His team were ten minutes away from Wembley, let it be said. They're now less than three minutes away from going out. Thomas, and Bright's in there. And Thomas! Staunton, Gray! Gray, 3-3! Three, three. Andy Gray for Palace, they're back in it! And Liverpool's defence all over the place. It's a free kick again, a set play, and... Keep your eye on number four, Andy Gray, because when all this is over, Rob Alarm comes, doesn't make it, Thomas, Staunton, Gray, 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> well, Rob Alar did punch it, but not far enough, it only to Jeff Thomas, and it span up of Staunton's chest, the man who actually got the penalty for Liverpool, has now virtually delivered the pass for Steve Coppel's team to equalise. Two minutes to go. Liverpool 3, Crystal Palace 3, and this one is going down in semi-final folklore. Barnes. Again. And it's still John Barnes, and well stopped by Martin, because Beardsley was right in for the rebound. John, I think this might bring the fans back. Well, I think if we had more football like this, more excitement like this, it, uh, it would generate even more of an increase at the greatest we're having at the moment anyway. It's great stuff, isn't it? 
and the armchair audience must be on the edge of their seats too. Here's Bright. Foul by Hansen, is it? Yes. Now, twice from free kicks, Palace have scored. Liverpool have also scored from one, of course, but uh, what sort of a finish could we be in for here? There is a minute to go of the 90. Father will take the kick. Thorne, O'Reilly and Bright are all lined up. It's a free kick. kick again so once more O'Reilly and Thorne take up their positions and once again Gray prepares to bend the ball in oh, against the bar by Thorne I think it's just stood still they just didn't even move at all there John it's amazing isn't it this against the crossbar in the dying seconds. Andy Gray to take the corner. Stoppage time. Bobalar struggling again. Flags up though, he was fouled. They put so many men in there, and there's so many men of uh, Liverpool trying to come back against them, and uh, he's trying to come out amongst those players, and he's finding that very difficult. Well, this was more Difficulties from a free kick against the crossbar. That's a good header and very unlucky. And his team could have been knocked out there right at the end. What a dramatic climax that would have been if it had been 4-3. And my word, he would have been celebrating then, wouldn't he? But given Liverpool untold trouble from free kicks, to see all the goals again just to remind ourselves what's happened here's the saying but what we have got is extra time well just wondering how you describe that second half it started with Liverpool leading 1-0 Steve Coppel's team got back into it straight away then they led 2-1 then they were 3-2 down then they got back to 3-3 and then they hit the bar that's the best summary I can offer you at the moment because I think Terry Venables and I are going to try and get our breath back and I think we might have a word from uh, Bob Wilson and Ray Wilkins. Well, Ray, I think really uh, it, Palace came out there and did every single thing that we hoped that they might do in the second half that they hadn't done in the first half. That's right. They really come out, Bob, and put Liverpool under a hell of a lot of pressure. Scored straight after the kickoff, and from that uh, from that moment, the game has been one hell of a football match, a great advertisement for football. They really deserve an enormous amount of credit, Palace, don't they? I think so, yeah. They've really... In the first half, I just thought it was so one way. I thought Liverpool would, were coasting to a victory. And Palace had come out, rolled their sleeves up and given a fantastic performance. As good as Liverpool were in the first half, Crystal Palace has been equally as good. And I think we can see Steve Coppel there. He must be a very proud man at the moment, Steve Coppel. One thing that we, we indicated before the game began, Ray, was that you have to get at Liverpool and secondly, you have to make them pay at set pieces because they don't defend well at set pieces. And that showed, didn't it? Definitely. And I think in the last minute, it highlights it uh, totally, Bob, really, when they hit the crossbar at Crystal Palace. And there was no one within two yards of the chap as he heads the ball against the crossbar. Liverpool are vulnerable at set pieces. Well, here is that very moment. It's Andy Thorne who comes up. Now, remember, this is at 3-3. This is like Brighton against Man United with a last-second incident. Don't mention that, Bob. <laughs> no, that was... Uh, Look, there's no Liverpool player in sight. There's four Crystal Palace players moving in on, on to the, the second ball. Unbelievable. They've really been let off the hook in a way, Liverpool now, haven't they? Kenny's down there talking to them. Now, now what's he saying in your opinion? Well, I don't honestly know, Bob. I would imagine he's trying to get Liverpool 
back into some sort of routine. They started the game superbly well, passing the ball around, and that's Liverpool style. And I honestly felt when they went 3-2 up, that was the end of the match. But uh, Palace, to all their credit, have come back and really made a game of this. And I think the next half an hour is going to be fantastic. Well, we're looking forward to that, obviously, Ray. Those Palace lads now, I mean, we did say, and I've got to put our necks on the block here, we said they had to do it in 90 minutes. Now, <laughs> here they go with 30 minutes extra time, so um, we're going to be proved right or wrong coming up. I think they had to do it in 90 minutes, but uh, if they get enough set pieces, if the ball's down in that end of the field long enough, they're going to get a chance because the service they've hit in has been first class and they've got people prepared to get on the end of the ball and they've, they've scored two goals from two set pieces and are well in this match. There's an amazing magic about the cup when aside Kenny Dalglish's team, there he is, looking very pensive. They've scored 11 goals against Crystal Palace this season, none against, beaten them in the league. Palace well, have got a relegation battle on their hands and yet... He's got to be flabbergasted, yeah. but full credit to Palace, it's been terrific. OK, here we go, back to Terry Venables and John Watson. very much Bob and uh, we wonder just what extra time might provide because we've had so much excitement already and uh, if you had to delay your lunch well we don't apologize for that because it's in the best interest I'm sure to stay with us for the next half hour and just see what unfolds here quite amazing what happened in that second half. I don't think the players have managed to catch up with it yet themselves. Uh, it's, uh, the game has swung one way and then the other. And uh, Palace looked to be on their way to Wembley. Then they looked out of it. Then suddenly they were back in it. And as you saw there, that header from Andy Thorne that clipped the crossbar could have made all the difference. I think we're saying about Liverpool not very good today on uh, set pieces. To be, but to be fair, the delivery that's going on and the amount of people in there, I think most teams will struggle against the uh, set pieces today. This is O'Reilly trying to shut off Barnes. Palace have started with Gray pushed up again alongside Bright. There's Gray, little back heel from him. This is Barber. And it's Venison. We couldn't have wished for any more incident. I mean, we've had everything. Goals, great shots, excitement, good passing, good football, some great saves as well. Everything's been in there. Well, I think it's probably the most exciting second half of a semi-final I've seen for many years, Terry. Uh, of the other people who will look back on previous games at this stage of the competition, but uh, this may get even better yet. This is Barnes. Staunton again, same position as before. He's in! Staunton! Oh, lost composure. Just a bit. What a good position he found himself in. Got on the wrong side of the defender and he made a great opportunity and he just let himself down there at the last minute. On his wrong foot, I think. Well, it was an opportunity spurned without a doubt by Steve Staunton, the Republic of Ireland International. It's worth bearing in mind in extra time, of course, that um, Liverpool had to use their two substitutes early on. Palace haven't had to. The injuries to um, Russian Gillespie meant that uh, Staunton and Venison were pushed into service during or at the end of the first half. If they don't settle it, by the way, the replay would be here at Villa Park again on Wednesday. That's jumping the gun a bit, really, because you've got Manchester United Oldham to look forward to yet, haven't you? <laughs> Forward by Staunton. That's Richard Shaw. Thomas. it out, Barber again, Gray,
Riley's forward for the free kick for Palace and how well they've used them. Offside, Bright. Six goals to look back on. And who knows what's to come. David Burrows. Staunton. Hussein. Salako did well there. Got it back from O'Reilly. Fairly quiet first five minutes of uh, extra time, but um, here comes Staunton, who's had the best chance so far. Houghton's coming in from the far side, the flag's up, the ball's out. Well, Terry, it's not a match, I suppose, now for analysis so much as sheer emotion. What do you think's going to happen? Well, I think that uh, there's been so much excitement, I think we've drained it all. It doesn't seem as if there's any room for any more, but uh, we'll, the way the game's gone so far, it's continually surprised us, so we've perhaps got some more in store for us. Pushed up um, Andy Gray now can put, uh, alongside uh, Bright to get a bit more pressure on their back four. Burrows. Shaw. Hussein. Hansen. This is Barry Benison. Barnes combining so well with Howard. And tries to find Beardsley. Back by Jeff Thomas, still playing the captain's part for Crystal Palace. Certainly had a hand in that third goal, which uh, was finally put in by Andy Gray. And there could have been a fourth one too, couldn't there? But in extra time, that's how it stands. Barber. Gray is well forward. May have handled it, but Liverpool had possession anyway with Burrows. Beardsley. Still Beardsley. Barnes in there, Staunton's waiting here. Away by Barber as far as Burrows. people in the Palace camp who were saying it won't be nine again but in a completely different way we've had six goals haven't we <laughs> this is Bright Barber Pemberton Ray Houghton looks for Steve McMahon. Good ball, drilled through. Oh, that's a play on. Good advantage, George Courtney, because Liverpool had possession. He'll have to speak to Andy Thorne now, though, I think, for the challenge on Steve McMahon. McMahon's back on his feet, however. 
Referee was right, I think, to let it go, Terry, because Beardsley was in a good position. I think you're quite right. He should have let it go, but once it has gone and it's uh, gone to nothing, I think you should have had a word with him. Yes, Andy Thorne seems to have uh, got away with that, rather. However... Well, if you've joined this one late, I'll try and uh, remind you what, exactly what's happened. We're in extra time. It's 3-3 in one of the most fluctuating semi-finals, I would think, since the war. Here's Beardsley. Burrows for Liverpool. Houghton pulling away beyond the far post for Liverpool. Here comes Whelan. And on the far side, Barry Venison. Barnes in the centre-forward position. There he is with O'Reilly. Back heel towards Venison. Oh, and the foot snaked out from Phil Barber. I think now as the fatigue's going to set in, John, I think it's the team that's going to pass the ball best will make the opportunities. Well, Liverpool, of course, played extra time in the final itself last year, didn't they, and came on strong against Everton. Will they do so again today? Beardsley will take the corner for them. He's pulled it back to Venison. Here's Staunton onside. Deflection, now the flag's up. He wasn't offside the first time, but they were the second. Well, that's the scene at Villa Park in this first period of extra time. Crystal Palace 3, Liverpool 3. What a match. is Thomas Ian Rush put Liverpool ahead after 15 minutes Mark Bright equalised first minute of the second half Gary O'Reilly made it 2-1 to Palace with 20 minutes of the 90 to go and here's Shaw they were 8 minutes away from Wembley at that stage Palace Steve McMahon equalised for Liverpool 2-2 Barnes with a penalty put them 3-2 up with 6 minutes to go and they were nearly at Wembley and then 2 minutes from the end of that exciting period Andy Gray came along to make it 3-3, which is why we're in extra time and East Enders has been delayed. But uh, it's on the way, and so is Manchester United Oldham. O'Reilly. Oh, difficulties here for Palace. Barnes. Well won back by Thomas. Gray. This is Barber. Pardew now. Three waiting in the centre for a cross for Palace. Solako provides it. Thomas in there. Robolas missed it! Is it? No, the whistle's already gone. Glenn Hussain, I think, must have been fouled. Alan Hansler, he put the ball in his own net in the end. I don't know whether I've got that right, Terry, but it seemed as though he did. But maybe he'd heard the whistle. It was given for a push, because Glenn Hussain went down. Three minutes left in the first period of extra time and three goals apiece. Number three, Burroughs. Venison getting well forward now. Looks for Barnes at centre forward, which is where he's really played since Rush went off. And there's McMahon. And we've got a Houghton's on the far side. Goes down. George Courtney has a look and doesn't give anything. And Andy Thorne covered for Nigel Martin very effectively. Well, Houghton was sniffing for the fourth goal there for Liverpool. Barnes. So tricky. Houghton's in there too. Barnes again. Side netting. Well, I think Liverpool look to be lifting it up a bit now. Five minutes. As I said, the space is appearing and they're passing the border better at the moment. And they're making the chances. Well, it's the uh, first year that we've had the opportunity to cover the two FA Cup semi-finals live. And... Uh, what a match this is to launch such a day.
Andy Gray for Crystal Palace. Tired this is beginning to creep in now. Even one or two of the challenges are looking a bit laboured. Because the match has been played at full pelt and there's been so much incident and excitement that it's probably drained the players emotionally as well as physically, I would have thought. I think they're certainly slowing down now, John. But who knows? We're into the last minutes of the first period of extra time here at Villa Park. This is Bright for Palace, Denison for Liverpool. Here's Barnes. Oh, and there goes Houghton. Pursued by Solarco, who's had to do a much of a defensive job today. Barnes again, he's really in the thick of it, John Barnes now. Venison, offside flags up. Well, coming up to the end of the first period of extra time, Terry, it looks as if it's almost, uh, compared to what went before, it's now a tight game again. That's right, I think Barnes, as you say, in the last 10, 15 minutes, is having his best spell now. He's getting a, a lot of the ball and he's enjoying himself. Bright, the same. Gray. So the end of the first period of extra time. Steve Popple has a quick word with Phil Barber. Don't think the managers are technically supposed to come on at this stage. The players changing straight round. 3-3, three, three, Terry. Well, I think there's been such a turnaround so often in this game. I think now at this stage, they're both settled for a replay, I think. Well, I wonder whether Ray Wilkins has uh, got any quick thoughts before we restart. What do you make of it, Ray? Well, I think the game's gone basically, John, as it did in the first half of the, the 90 minutes. Uh, Liverpool have been on top. Um, but Palace, I think uh, Terry said that they're settled for a replay. I think Terry could well be right there. They look very, very tired now, and I think that is the nervous energy now creeping into the match now. So, the second period of extra time, and uh, Liverpool, Terry, the team that are said to have the great uh, stamina and resilience in situations like this. Well, I think it's, it's not even one of that, it's a, it's a one of, as I said, I think it's the passing now to make the other team run even more. Well, it's certainly pulling at the nerve ends, this one, isn't it? This is Barnes. Oh, good trickery. And he's right it on the keeper here. In the end, Andy Thorne got a foot to it. Corner. Ray Houghton's gone across to take it. Once he's inside the 18-yard box, John Barnes now is looking to hold on to that ball and uh, really frighten the opposition. Well, Barnes and Beardsley and Hussain are all waiting. And Barnes comes in first. That's Venison. Barnes... Looks as though he might have come back from offside. Staunton, Houghton. Corner again to Liverpool. They're forcing the issue at the start of this final 15 minutes. That was quite a comfortable catch for uh, Nigel Martin. Looks as though he's really enjoyed the game, the uh, Palace goalkeeper, and I suppose it's one that the players will look back on and say, well, it was something to be part of, but of course, not if you lose. And it's a shame in a way that there will have to be a loser at the end of this semi-final. If not today, on Wednesday night, perhaps. Here's Pemberton. Beardsley. Barnes to his right. Houghton down the middle. Barnes looking threatening. Shaw blocked it. <laughs> Pemberton gave the ball away carelessly, probably out of tiredness to Houghton. Outside him is McMahon here. 
three waiting for a cross. And McMahon curls one, drifting away from the far post. asking too much for the extra time to live up to the uh, expectations after the 45 minutes we had before that forward by Thorne looking for Bright Hussain is with him trying to turn inside in corner to Palace well they made such good use of their set plays Crystal Palace that you wouldn't rule them out now Andy Gray has gone across to take it Andy Thorne who hit the bar in what the last minute was it of normal time he's gone up again number six Gary O'Reilly who scored from that sort of position from a free kick is also there Barber's on the line and Bright is waiting too Steve Coppel's team had scored from and it's back with the underdog again well whether that got a touch off a defender as well I'm not quite sure it could have done there were three of them in the crowd I think it was just when I was beginning to put some good play together Liverpool I just they just lose one set piece again and they just can't seem to handle it today. Well, let's not speak too soon anybody now because free kick again, John Barnes on the ball. What on earth is going to... There's now Palace players arguing with each other in the wall, pushing each other about. 4-3 to Palace and Barnes to take a free kick for Liverpool. They haven't gone back 10 yards. Barnes curls it! Oh, wasn't perhaps quite as far away from Martin as I suspected it might be. McMahon a Sunday team down in Surrey called the Nomads who will be watching this game today because they've cancelled their fixture I'm told because their coach and manager is Alan Pardew and it may be that he's written the last chapter in this game or dare I say that Liverpool have got possession with Whelan and this is Hussain there are eight minutes left and I have to keep saying it don't rule Liverpool out Benison Shaw 
Whelan. McMahon, one of the goal scorers earlier. Staunton. Palace appealing for offside there, not given. This is Mark Bright with Alan Hansen. They're all standing up on the Palace bench across there. So is Kenny Dalglish. The tension inside the ground is quite fantastic. I hope it's coming across at home. This is Barnes. McMahon. Venison. Tried the shot. Terry Venables, what do you think? Well, dare you say, it looks uh, as if Crystal Palace, for the first time, are going to go to Wembley in the FA Cup. Uh, they're still playing good football, Liverpool, but uh, it's just a case of set pieces. We also got another view of that goal from that angle, Terry, didn't we? And that confirms that Alan Pardew, who, as we thought, was the scorer. It was a real uh, flick on from Thorne, though. Again, Liverpool have been undone today on corners and free kicks. Here's Barber. My mind goes back to the Wimbledon Cup final and talking to Bobby Gould in the week about uh, playing Liverpool on Tuesday. There is a feeling that if you can get the delivery in on corners and free kicks, then this man's team are human after all. And Palace have proved that this afternoon with a vengeance. Steve Coppola has done his homework. Hansen to Barnes. This is Jeff Thomas. Six minutes away from Wembley, Crystal Palace. They were eight minutes away in normal time. Can they hold it on this occasion? Seven goals in the semi-final. Benison. Palace fans singing. Terry, I feel as drained as they must feel. Good news for those at home at Dunlop Football. There's another match coming up in a minute. Tell him that. On by Whelan. Barnes is still hovering dangerously in the centre forward position. really academic now but I suppose in the light of cool appraisal somebody will wonder what would have happened if Rush hadn't been injured as it is there are five minutes to go in this highly charged semi-final with so much to talk about and look back on and who's to say it's over yet O'Reilly McMahon Palace have really got to keep their nerve now and not dive in and do anything silly Staunton Went over Glenn Hussain's head, but this is how there's danger. Barnes! Oh, and Nigel Martin! Well, that save might have been worth a million pounds, you never know. From John Barnes' downward header, when he looked odds on to score. Ray Houghton delivers the cross. Barnes heads it down, back towards where Martin was coming from, and the keeper was grateful. Bright is trying to stay onside here. Andy Gray's going on a charge, and Alan Hansen steps in. Four minutes of extra time left. 4 3 Crystal Palace lead. Thomas. Header by Hussain. Oh, Beardsley seemed to push sure there. Doesn't matter anyway. Jeff Thomas, offside Mark Bright, the man who really triggered all the excitement by scoring in the opening minutes of the second half of normal time. Three minutes we have left now. I suppose one's tempted to say, can Manchester United and Oldham follow this? I'm sure they'll do their best.
Look where Bruce Grobelar is. <laughs> well out, isn't he? That's how desperate the situation is for Liverpool at the moment. We have a break in play because John Pemberton has gone down, Terry. Um, now, do you see a last-minute dramatic recovery by Liverpool and this man or not? Well, you can't rule it out. I don't think so. I think that um, Crystal Palace are on the way. Well, it's your old club. You were with them the last time they got to a semi-final, 1976. And this man must be thinking now, goodness me, how close we are. Against all the odds in many ways. We make it two minutes, plus any time that George Courtney now adds on for this injury. And I'm certain we haven't got too many viewers who've not been part of the whole of this, but if we have, Pemberton was injured in that challenge, by the way. Just let me remind you that um, Ian Rush put Liverpool ahead and went off injured. Goals by Brighton, O'Reilly made it 2-1 to Palace. McMahon and Barnes for Liverpool turned it round at 3-2. Gray equalised to make it 3-all, and Pardew's goal in extra time has made it 4-3. McMahon. Beardsley. Oh, a dangerous ball by Venison, and Nigel Martin had to come and claim that as Ray Houghton steamed in. There's a minute to go at Villa Park. Crystal Palace are that close to Wembley to putting out the holders and the favourites, Liverpool. to destroying the dream of the double. Can they hold on? The ground booming with noise from Palace supporters. Look where Glenn Hussain's playing now, centre forward. McMahon. Good challenge, actually, that by John Salako, who's... No, he can't go back. Bright's up there. Picks it on. And uh, has to run after Hansen. Four three to Crystal Palace. Coming up to the end of extra time, Jeff Thomas getting tangled up with Ronnie Whelan. Shouts at George Courtney. Gets nothing. On by Hussein. Barnes. There's danger here. Turns it in, but there's not now. We are up to the end of the 30 minutes extra time. It's only a question of what George Courtney, the World Cup referee, decides to add on for stoppages. Bright on his own up there for Palace. We are on the verge of a real turn up here. Andy Thorne battling away. And Jeff Thomas. And Bright's made a curving run to stay on side. That was brilliant, actually, at this stage of the game. He's got Barber in the middle, but he'll, he'll want to try and hold it up if he can. Well, I don't condone time-wasting, but in Palace's situation, you can forgive it today, can't you? After all we've been through here. The referee has given the goal kick. He's looked across at his linesman. He's checked his watch again. George Courtney. Everybody's looking at him. When will he blow? Crystal Palace 4, Liverpool 3, and Crystal Palace are at Wembley. They've beaten Liverpool, whose dream of the double is destroyed in one of the most amazing matches, surely, in the recent history of the FA Cup. Steve Koppel runs off, and the Palace supporters celebrate one of the most unexpected and dramatic victories that I can remember happening, certainly at this stage of the competition, Alan Pardew is the man whose name comes out of nowhere, the former Yeovil player. His goal has sent Crystal Palace to Wembley. And the final score at a thrilled Villa Park after extra time is Crystal Palace 4, Liverpool 3. Well, Ray, Crystal Palace really deserve all our congratulations. They've done what we and many others thought wasn't possible. That's right, Bob. I didn't really think that they would win the game. Um, so much for their nervous energy and extra time as well. Palace have been an absolute credit. They've fought their, 
their socks off this afternoon and I think overall they thoroughly deserve to win. An amazing story and the name of Alan Pardew, who few people would know, will be known tomorrow morning. That's right, it definitely. The, they scored three of their four goals from set pieces, Bob, and full credit to Crystal Palace. They've done their homework and uh, they've done exceptionally well today. Well, Liverpool's double dream is over. The 9-0 humiliation at Anfield has been avenged by Crystal Palace. It's a most amazing thing. The year of the underdog continues and we look forward an hour ahead to Oldham against Manchester United. Well, quite an extraordinary result and here at Main Road the fans already in the ground here have just been made aware of that result. Uh, a huge cheer went up when they heard that uh, Palace were through to Wembley. So yes indeed we're waiting now for Manchester United against Oldham. If this match turns out to be just half as good as that one we're in for another thrilling afternoon. So rejoin us if you will for more live semi-final action in an hour's time.